credits with our pictures. Be like, Jim. Oh, hi. Hi, hi. there. This is DTLT Today. Today. What are we going to be talking about today? Today. Online learning. Today. Yeah. Okay. Today and the future of. The future of. I don't of know if you knew this. The learning. Little, little known secret. I'm the future of online learning. I had heard that on the webs. <laughs> yeah. On the Twitters. Yep. They're making the shirts now. I'm hey, sure. I'm the future of online learning. Uh, so what do you think I'm about? I'm stupid. What do you think about <laughs> online learning? You know, a it's funny. A load of crap. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's interesting. And we had talked about this, but, you know, before we had experimented with DS106 and stuff, you know, I had my real reservations, and I still do in the way it's mar mass marketed out there for universities and how to approach it as a kind of cost-saving, money-making technique. But thinking about online courses as something in which you embed the experience in the network and you watch people collaborate and stuff blew my mind. Right. I mean, and I didn't expect it. I was afraid of it. You knew when we started that in spring and then what happened in the summer. It was an interesting evolution. I just think there's so much possibility there now after experimenting with yeah. like what we did with digital storytelling, DS-106, Summer of Oblivion. I'm actually thrilled about the prospect of teaching online again. Well, and we should probably give people a little bit of background information to what we're involved in at Mary Washington. I think so. So I guess about good idea. Uh, eight months ago. Let me take out my wallet because it's hurting my oh, your, oh, tokus. Your, te your derriere. <laughs> my derriere. Um, All the money in it. Yeah, it's really, it's bursting. <laughs> um, about eight months ago, our president announced at an all-faculty meeting an yep. online learning initiative, and that was the first that we had actually heard of it. TJ 2012, you know. <laughs> what, whatever right, it is. Yeah, TJ 11. TJ it's 11. A, actually, I guess, a state thing where Tough jobs. Where Virginia is um, supporting university experimentation or development. It's throwing money at courses. STEM, distance yeah. learning. Yeah. And a whole bunch. Those are the two. Those top are the two ones, big so. ones. So, um, like many other schools, we kind of jumped on that bandwagon to see what we could do. And I think to our credit, um, yeah. right from the get-go, thanks to the efforts of one Steve Greenlaw, yeah. um, we right. framed this a little bit differently than other schools. And, and Steve really pushed everybody to think about this in the context of, liber of the liberal arts education. That's right. And like, what let that be the here. driving force. Um, you know, how can we teach quality liberal arts courses online? online. Uh, as opposed to the factory mentality, which is what you were referring to a moment ago. Yeah, and I really think that was, I mean, we came at it, and what was nice is that we didn't get that much money, right? Right. It was kind of a small state grant, yeah. but it was enough to give faculty money to develop out over mm -hmm. the summer. And what we did is, you know, you came in this, you were part of this process as well. We came in and we said, you know, what you want to do is you want to think about how you can take this course and not simply mimic what you're doing in the classroom face-to-face -face for online, but think about it. We've had a series of things, um, a series of kind of workshops, discussions, right. even yesterday. So yesterday we, we met one. for the, the conversation that I'd been dreading because, we, well, we tried to have it last week and it was interrupted by a, a, an earthquake, yeah. which I thought was probably a, a, a bad, bad sign. Well, the and sign the, from God. Yes, from some higher power that um, well, this meeting was to look at a variety. <laughs> the University of Phoenix, they paid for that to happen. Well, that Because they knew sense, we were going to disrupt their right. model. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> What we were looking at was a couple of rubrics yeah. from some established um, programs as models of, because what we're going at getting into now is kind of the review stage of looking at faculty course plans. And uh, so we looked at these rubrics. and We learned a lot about oh, rubrics, yeah. though. Yeah. Like, what's a rubric, in your opinion, <laughs> what is after a rubric? looking at those? Like, we had Chico States, uh, Ion, Ions, and, and Monterey. Monterey. It's like a, a rubric is, this is what you put on your syllabus. Yeah. It's like the weirdest thing it in the very, world. Yeah, it was very um, almost like standoffish from the actual like activity of teaching. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? It. it was like there was no. You Here know. is what you would need to do to make sure that students know where to find their grade. Right. Here's yeah. what you make do sure to know. you have adequately explained to students. Um, the role of each individual assignment in the course. Yeah. Here's and how you're grading your students, and they should know, and they should have three different ways to get access to that. Right, like, yeah. It has nothing to, to do, do with, teaching. with the idea of 
here's how you inspire a group of people right. to think in yeah, interesting right. ways. Here's how you build like a community of learners <laughs> who will go on to solve problems. <laughs> right, yeah, it was very, and, and to yeah. their credit, like all the faculty who we met with yesterday completely saw that. Um, saw that and were sort of like, why would somebody dictate this? You know, this yeah. is just this a no-brainer. Housekeeping brainer. stuff. Housekeeping stuff. So yeah. that said, I think what we did is we actually went through every point on every rubric. Yeah, you were pretty good about it was pretty brutal. making sure that we did not and miss And it was a point. hard because people kept, <clears throat> Steve, people kept getting distracted. Yes, <clears throat> true. And so by French fries and other such. Good French fries. There were very good French fries. Um, but we got through all of them. And I do think we had some things emerge from that conversation that yeah. actually will help frame this, con frame this project going forward. What I really liked, and I, I agree with that, what I really liked is like Dave McEwen, who's in the psychology department here at UMW, who's one, and Marjorie Ock, and you know, Don Rallis, who wasn't there, and Jane Huffman, who's in education. Like Everyone was like, look, this is an experiment that we're trying here at Mary Washington. We need to go and share what we're doing as a group. And this is not us even telling them that. This right. is like, look, we got to kind of not try and pr define Don't the experience. Overly, yeah, right. But make it. Let's experience it. And then at the end, and Dave even said this, he was like, I think a really important part of this project should be some sort of reflection at the end yeah. in which we talk about the choices we made, how things turned out, what would we would do differently, so that what we're building really is a community of, of faculty yeah. who are sharing those experiences. Which for me, it's like, that's it. Well, it's not and that I do have to say that the other like, thing that's that I, what you need. I think helped frame this entire conversation, especially for you, going into that meeting was an epic post that I wrote on my blog yesterday. This is true. Which I had to read to Jim because... Which I heard wasn't an animated gift. Yeah, no, there was no animated gift. Although I, I have been told by enough. others it would be improved yeah, with an animated I guess gift. You, you weren't good yeah. enough to distill those ideas. I haven't got, I'm not quite at that level like yet. I can only Julia. dream. Me and Julia Forsyth are really ahead of the curve on that. I understand You that. not so much. Me, I rely on flashcards. Yeah, you and Timmy, boy. Our so, producer today. Hi, Timmy. We you're doing a great there. job there, Timmy. Tim's kind of <laughs> Tim's a little grumpy today because yeah, he hasn't had day. power for a few days, yeah. and yeah, I think living with the in-laws is starting to catch up with him. He says he's going to do that for a year. Yeah. If I had to live with, I hope they're not watching. If I had to live with my in-laws for a year, that wouldn't work. I, Think of all the money. I can't you even. All the money. I can't. I can't even imagine. I know. So and getting back to our that's topic, the idea. quality <laughs> right. online courses versus the money. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the trade-off. So I think that it was a very productive um, conversation. I have been spending this afternoon working on compiling my notes from yeah. yesterday's meeting and Steve's notes. And what I've been doing is we have these five. This is why I have cards here today. Five values of a liberal arts education, which the group had developed earlier this summer. They yeah. are. Reflection community, active learning, interactivity, and self-directed learning. Yeah. And I've been trying to sort of distill some of what we talked about yesterday um, under each of these broad headings. Well, well that was the idea, right? We were going to now, we weren't going to come up with a rubric per right. se. We we're going to come up with a series of guidelines of what we thought the yeah. liberal arts education experience was, what we wanted to try and preserve or rethink or reimagine the logic and space for the liberal arts experience Bingo. online. Right. Right? Yeah, right. And, and that's... It's time to drink! <laughs> at least I'm pointing it out when I, I know, do it yeah. now. But that was the idea. It's like, we're not going to say, here, here's what you have to do. Did you put your office hours on right. your syllabus? Yeah. No. Here's some of the things we really want to get at. And I think the things that became, like, important for us now to dig together as a group... Right. ...is how do you get good interaction online? Right. Right? You know, how do you model multimodal right. kind of uh, assignments? like using audio, video, stuff like that. How do you use the media of the digital exactly. to do to an online this course? Goal. Yeah. And so what I've been doing for each of these is I've been writing kind of a description of like what is, like what is community in liberal arts education? Yeah. What is community in liberal arts education online? Like how do we think about and conceive of this value within an, an online context? Yeah. You know, what, what do those digital what environments afford us? when it comes to this value, and then coming up with a list of here's some things you might consider. Yeah. Um, like for community, one of the things we talked about was um, the whole notion of peer feedback. Yeah. That that's one way that you go about building community is by encouraging that kind of cross-fertilization of ideas through um, peer feedback. And that's certainly been a core component of a lot of the online you know, 
the DS, DS-106, but well, in addition to other courses where we worked with faculty at putting significant portions of a course online is, yeah. you know, using, using web-based environments as a place for students to really um, build community through the sharing and critiquing of each other's work. Yeah. And how we, I mean, it's interesting, we have a community of this online six courses built in. And what's been my thought, and I don't know if we've talked about this extensively yet, but like, how do we use the actual experience of having six courses going to be taught in spring or summer to kind of model that community outside their course, sure, right? Yeah. Whether it be the faculty sharing what they're doing and the students reading each other's work or just a place where you go, here's all the online open courses at Mary Washington, watch them go. Right. Like right. just a space where you can yeah. see it. And it doesn't mean you're going to sit and read everyone's sure, work. Yeah. But you can say, hey, here's a post on economics. Here's a post on environmental science. Right. Here's a post on math. Here's a post on psychology. Yeah. Like this kind of weird, what we're doing with you Amalgamation and the blogs, but of, yeah. focused. Yeah. yeah. Make it out there. And we haven't really broached it. And it's going to be interesting when we do, like, how comfortable are all these faculty with the idea of it's open? Yeah, we haven't really talked like, about that. And I've been kind of a emphasizing good it in the course, area. I think is an open. Well, Although we're I think it started it. kind of coming out a little bit yesterday in the meeting, and I was yeah. surprised that like people around the table weren't like, wait yeah. a minute. And I think I, think I they, have to believe, yeah. and this might be us patting ourselves on the back. It's but us. But I have to believe that we've been our, since Gardner's our, been here, right? We've been setting the tone it's for our that. leadership. Yeah, it's we our are, leadership. Yeah. We are kind of a big deal. We are a big deal on the internet. And the cuddle couch doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's very comfortable. It's a corporate cuddle couch. So I'm, and I'm interested to see like what they come up with in terms of the plans that they, and that the other thing that we talked yeah. about was this whole notion of like the review panel yeah. of the course, like getting rid of this idea this that great. you know there's a review panel who's been given a rubric and they're going to evaluate your submission that against that rubric. That was very Sinclair. It was very like. It was very over the top. It was. And so what we suggested is that instead we think of these more as kind of creative partnerships where each faculty member has access to a panel, a group of colleagues yeah. who each offer a slightly different perspective on what they're doing, on what they're teaching, on how they're teaching, um, and that it's as much a, like a, a conversation about yeah. the course than it is a review of the you course. You can't model community in your class if you're not doing it in the creation of your class. Right. And that's where right. I love that idea and it broke open for me when you said it is, you know, you do this idea together and everybody should be in the same room sharing how they're doing it, how they're going about creating interactivity and it shouldn't be like the review board said Marjorie right, yeah. did it well. Marjorie must work on point five wow. dot Three dot yeah, work a. On it together yeah. and yeah, that was the other thing is that like, sure the review panels will do some of this stuff on their own, but that we'll have some meeting, yeah. a larger, longer meeting where we'll all come back and talk about this, where we are with these, and what sort of reactions and critiques came out. And I felt um, really positive I mean, coming out because I don't think that, and we talked about this before we even started in our kind of preparation loosely for this show is like. This isn't a model that's going to save the state money necessarily. Yeah. This isn't a model that's going to be the efficient plug in your adjunct here and do your online course. And mm -hmm. that's fine because that's not the model we at Mary Washington want to perpetuate. Because that's not liberal arts education. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, we want to preserve the education yeah. within the idea of education. And that's never going to be cheaper. Is it the edu or the cation that we want to preserve? You know what we want to preserve? The UK. -tion. The UK. Make it not just education, but uh, avocation. Uh, you know not, what I mean? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking here? I'm but ta I know point, what you're talking there. Are you going to let me preach? Are you gonna preach. Through, are you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Nothing. I'm sit. I, <laughs> I'm wondering about you. The point is, and I've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> the but education. We're going to preserve the education in the education. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to sell out. Yeah, we're not going to come at this like, here's how you're going to make, you know, $50 million, President, President yeah. Hurley. And Virginia, here's how you're going to save your money. Because, you know, the fact is, is distance education, when it's done right, should not be about saving money. Mm -hmm. should be about, okay, understanding that there might be ways to scale differently and there might be new ways to imagine it. But if you're talking about cutting your workforce to educate more people, I mean, what you're putting out then is a broken good. Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, and if you're really cutting the idea of expertise. And we talked about this when it came up, but recently Mark Perry wrote an article in the Chronicle of Higher, Learn Higher Education, which basically said that, you know, the University of New Southern New Hampshire did some 
interesting things. They kind of blew up their continuing ed and online course. But they did it with 7,000 students versus the 2,000 in their brick and mortar school, and their brick and mortar school has been suffering. They don't have many people coming in, yet their online education blew up. When you look under the surface, and Mark Perry did a good job of reporting this, all of those t uh, classes are taught by uh, adjuncts, right? They make tons of money, which they reinvest in the professors and the brick but, and mortar. But by they, you mean the school, not the, the adjuncts. <laughs> yeah, and they actually basically bribe the professors to pay these adjuncts, and kind of the professors don't realize that they're kind of giving away. They've diluted. Yeah, their whole We might profession. say they've diluted their brand. Yeah, exactly. They're pro if and we I just think of speak like, you know, Southern New, New. They don't deliver anything unique. Yeah. They're not reimagining no. online education, right? They're just packaging it yeah. and selling it. Yeah. And the convenience makes a difference. Well, it is the de definition of the digital facelift, I guess, that Gardner speaks of. You know, just yeah. taking a course and sort of calling it throwing digital. throwing a little digital makeup on it. Yeah. A little web makeup yeah. and saying now we've got online learning and it's going to And we won't do that at Mayor Washington. We don't do that. No. We, don't, we don't wear makeup. We won't sell out to We're you. We're all natural. That's right. No, well, no breast jobs here, baby. <laughs> I can get away with all natural. He <laughs> requires can't. some significant. I need a little tummy tuck, but that's kind <laughs> of natural. All right. I all right. Is that it? It's, been like, it's been at least 15 minutes. At least. We love you, Jason Green. You're our number one fan. Oh, is he in there? Yay, DS Jason. DS26. For DTLT life. update. <laughs> what, what is it called again? DTLT today. I know. DTLT you have a hard time today. with that.